Hello, this is uh, sped up footage uh, with me playing against Korean Control, which is very interesting. This is my first time playing against it. Uh, this is a ranked game. I think they're a D2. Uh, Drillage Hell's, Hell Lemons. Um, oh, yeah, I was very, very happy about this moment. This it's right here. Hand. Oh, my goodness. It's like a dream hand. <laughs> yeah, if you hear me saying to my microphone, I said that this is the dream hand. I was pondering about, I'm like, is there a better hand? There is possibly better hands, but you having one trying to fit copy so early is amazing. Having two Achans as insurance for when I know they're going to kill my first Achan, it's just amazing. Current control likes to um, fear some units, kill things, so... I always attack here. If they manage to buff up their thing, I'm just gonna um, stasis myself, but they don't. They play Elise instead. I don't opt to go to Station Archivist because I only have one mana that turn to play anything else, so. Unfortunate draw. Did not like that. And I'm already thinking I need to predict. So, one thing about Station Archivist, which is so important, is that it will show you the next five spells in your in your hand. And you don't know what minions are there. You don't know what landmarks are there, right? And I, I'm running two of the predict landmark. I'm running clockwork, right? Um, there's some things I don't really want. So I already know I need to reset my my hand. I do not want to draw two right of calling. So no matter what, I'm going to have to predict this round. My Ashon gets targeted. Uh, yeah, thank God that I went through. If that didn't go through, I would have been... A much more in trouble, but they did not have another Mystic Shot. That was probably the bigger part of the game. So here I do something which I ponder about it, maybe if we forget. Maybe want to block um, the 1-2 instead, but they glimpsed me on. I was like, oh, that's not a big deal. And then I found out, oh, and it's a huge deal. Everything just is going to hit me for a lot more, so. So I'm at 10 HP. But look at the time. Look at the uh, mana. I'm on turn 5, and I'm racing for that turn 7. Also, this is a really interesting point. They never block. You can hear me say it. I think. Okay, never, never mind. Don't. Um, they never block on Sean. This deck is from Run Shape Stone. There's no buffs. Like they, they should have blocked on Sean, but honestly, they just, I, they don't. And honestly, it's a very powerful bluff. While this deck isn't really well known to just get that one more hit in. Um, I was fine with Achan dying. I had another one. And once Achan is leveled up, I don't care anymore. I just, I just don't care about Ashan. Ashan can die, that's totally fine. I just need him to level up to give me that landmark. I'm pondering about how do I rush the landmark down. So normally I would do trying to fit copies, but Ancient Hourglass is so nice if I can target it on my Ashan, because it will reduce it by one because you target an ally. And then when he resummons, it will uh, reduce the landmark by one. So it's effective, it's like a clockwork curator. Also, Hourglass is just kind of neat against their deck because P and Z, they have run a lot of burn. So now I'm really scared of my health. And... What is this? The Vengeance. I get very lucky there. Um, I think... Can I have one in here? No, I can't have gone in this turn. No matter, I can every now and then go in on turn six. It's, it's like dream hands and like where I'm very confident I can do it. Usually turn seven is fine. I have the attack token. So here I go in. Uh, I kind of regret attacking, but I don't have a way to easily give me uh, the landmark to, uh, advancement. The reason I don't like attacking usually is because it ruins the Ezreal elusive win con, which is honestly just faster. It's just faster to win with Ezreal, uh, just elusive hitting them for like 20 damage than it is to actually burst them down. But but because I attacked early, now I have to go through the Ezreal uh, ability game plan where I shoot them 15 times. So. so I actually made a really big misplay there. Um... I Strying Sands, the Elise, because I basically thought I was already winning. Um, you notice a moment where I'm like, oh my goodness. 
But there's one way I can lose this game, and it's via. Actually, I won't. I won't exactly say why. But I should never have Strange Sands the weakest target. I should always do it on the biggest target. Yeah, at a certain point, um, I just want to thin out my deck a bit more. So it's atrocity. I'm very happy I had that. That's when I realized, oh, I would have, I would have, I would have lost. <laughs> um, but, but all worked out in the end, so. At this point, I'm just looking for, um, another Warlord's Horde, and I'm, I'm getting really nervous. This had to hit. If this didn't hit, I probably would have lost. But it did hit, and now I know I'm golden. Because I know there's a ton more in my deck now. I usually would have went for Vault Breaker there and just ended the game, but because I attacked early, I need to level up Ezreal. You see me often check what percentage Ezreal is at, and it's important because this deck doesn't have that many ways of leveling up Ezreal. Achan's Champ Spell is a, is a way, so you see me use that right here. Yeah. Sometimes they wrote me. I don't know if this is a playthrough where they wrote me, but they don't. And now he's there. Now I'm looking for Vault Breaker, which I do find. I do an emote. Sometimes people will think it's nice of them to let me play Vault Breaker like 15 times. I do the emote to say the game's over, and I kind of don't want to press the buttons 15 times. So that was against uh, Korean Control. And you can see, again, Turn seven, so.